Yeah, we essentially, you know, like I said, we started cover crops for more of a water quality thing, but it's all morphed into, we're finding different benefits to it. Um, and that one of those things that I guess we never really thought of in the beginning was the weed control. Uh, we're applying heavier rates of rye into our standing corn that'll become beans the following um, spring. And we're hoping with a, with a thicker stand of rye, we're able to um, suppress some of those early season broadleaves that'll emerge. Uh, we also have delayed termination on the cover crop. So that doesn't start right away. Um, it's taken a few years to, to learn how to manage that and figure that out. And it's not a beginner method of using cover crops by any means, but we know how to make it work. Um, we're able to delay the termination and then uh, use some of that to suppress those weeds in the spring. Our first time planting beans no-till into big standing rye. And you look back behind the tractor, you look at the planter, and you can't see the row units. The cereal rye is taller, taller than the row units, and you go out in the soil behind where those soybeans are being planted, and there's pieces of earthworm that have been <laughs> disrupted by the, the planting of the row unit, and that soil is like chocolate cake in your hands, you know, just cr crumbling behind that behind that planter unit as it went through the soil. So we got seed in the soil, we got good clothes on the row units, that soil texture was awesome. We know we had good soil biology in there with the amount of earthworms we had right at the top. And we know from the cereal rye biomass that's there that we're gonna also have better weed control throughout the year. That was, that's a pretty memorable one too. In the past, we would terminate it, you know, a week or two before we planted soybeans. But as we got more comfortable with our system, we started actually planting our soybeans green into that cereal rye. And in fact, have kind of delayed planting a little bit to allow that cereal rye to get tall. We really do like planting into at least 5,000 pounds of biomass, cereal rye biomass uh, uh, per acre, and ideally seven or 8,000. So we do like to let that grow, well, probably mid to late May, at least sometimes early June. So after we plant our soybeans green into that cereal rye, we terminate it right away with herbicides. Yes, yeah, so we're planting beans into either green rye that hasn't been grazed if it's on a farm that, you know, where we don't have cows close at that point in time, or we're planting beans into growing rye that's been grazed, you know, chewed down pretty short. So we'll no-till either plant them or drill into that and then terminate that rye, you know, a month later, somewhere in there, approximately, let it grow, you know, because we want something growing out there since beans are just a legume. I want that grass growing for as long as we can to help from a weed control standpoint too. And it also just seems like beans like having that rye out there growing with it for a period of time as well. Um, as we've become more confident with our cover crops, we've been willing to let them grow longer. Um, and we, we plant all of our soybeans into green standing cover crop. And the longer we can let that cover crop grow, um, the, the easier it seemed to be to, to manage weeds. And so that's been a big difference for us on, on soybeans is letting, letting the rye or our cover crop grow longer. Um, and and that's, that's helped us to, to be able to manage those a little bit easier. When the first time that we let that cereal rye grow and then planted into it green and then killed it, we were really afraid <laughs> we weren't gonna see any beans come up. And it was really cool, even when beans are this tall, if you spray that cereal rye and don't knock it down, you don't see your beans until much, much later, a month or more after you've planted it. So you begin to wonder, is there anything growing out here? And it's really cool about halfway through the growing season to see a nice even stand of soybeans with a few sticks of cereal rye pointing, uh, poking up. But it really does give you some satisfaction that yes, you can plant soybeans green into cover crop and have a fairly outstanding soybean crop. So when we're thinking about planting soybeans into rye, we wanna look, start by looking at the planter that we're gonna be using. And we wanna make sure we have a number of things that are taken care of. We want a planter, of course, that the, the ground contact points are in good condition. Uh, you know, they're in working condition with inspec. Um, so you have disc openers that are right diameter. You have gauge wheels that are set right next to the disc openers so that you're getting the right, uh, right contact between those points and you can get accurate depth. You want to index for your row units. So your row units are all planting to the same depth accurately. 
Um, you want to make sure your down pressure springs or whatever down pressure system that you're using works effectively to get that row unit in the ground and hold it at the accurate soil depth. Um, you want to look at your closing wheel system and make sure that you can effectively pull soil that might have living crop residue in it back over that seed trench and close it and compact it properly behind that seed planting. So you want to look at all those points on your planter to be able to sh make sure that those are taken care of. Uh, so that's one of the first things that you want to do. When you're in the field planting, you want to make sure you're watching those things to make sure, especially when you're planting into tall rye, you can't see your row units when you're actively planting. So sometimes that means making a couple extra stops when you're at the end of the field to just walk behind your planter and make sure everything's still there, everything's functioning like it's supposed to, everything's turning like it's supposed to. Uh, because you can occasionally get rye or other crop residue, cover crop residue that wraps in certain areas of a planter depending on how you have it set up. So we're looking at that as we're planting and we want to make sure that seed is getting in the ground at the accurate depth and being closed, covered and closed effectively. So one of the biggest challenges that we've seen on our farm and we see on other farms is getting the seed slot closed well when you're planting into cover crops. So that's, that's really important. And there's a number of settings and aftermarket products that you can use on your planter that can help with that. Sure. So it depends on the crop that we're planting when we terminate the cover crop. And it depends on weather conditions too. In a drier spring, because of some of the research done by PFI cooperators, in a drier spring, we'll typically terminate our rye a little bit sooner, just from a moisture preservation standpoint, um, ahead of soybeans. Um, usually we're terminating a cover crop, whether it's corn or soybeans, at or just after planting. Um, there's rules that you need to follow from a crop insurance standpoint of when you terminate that cover crop that we always try and pay attention to. But usually we found the best success to plant into a cover crop that's still green because you get a better cutting action on your ground contact points on your planter. You're less likely to wrap. That residue is still attached to the ground and you maximize the growth of that cover crop by waiting until at planting or just after planting to go ahead and spray. And another concern is if you plant, if you spray just before you plant, you might disrupt or disturb that cover crop plant enough that you reduce herbicide effectiveness. So by waiting until after we plant, we know we're not gonna be disturbing that cover crop plant anymore and have a better chance of having an effective kill with our herbicide. Thank you.